introduce our inspirational speaker today, Reverend Diane Pitt. I'll leave her bio for you. Reverend Diane received her psychic gifts by age of 15. Her grandmother was an ordained spiritualist in the spirit. Reverend Diane has experience with physical mediumship, such as direct voice and use of the trumpet. In fact, she studied this phenomenon under Reverend Stephen Paul of Long Beach, who is a trumpet medium. Reverend Diane has also seen spirit manifest in a bodily form. Reverend Diane Pitt's studies included healing, and she was ordained at UCM, or United Church of the Masters, as a member of the National Spiritualist Association. She studied under Morris Pratt. If that wasn't enough, she is also an accomplished singer and performer. Help me welcome. <laughs> So at the Sweetenberg Church, when I first encountered him, uh, and he took over, he doesn't take over my body, he takes over the vocal cords. It's different. I never let the spirit take me over completely. Because you don't know, when you're developing, you don't know who's coming in, so you don't let anybody in, okay? So after I came off the platform, the lady said to me, I saw your teacher, he comes in the blue light. Yeah. Wow. So he had told me he came in the blue light. So that was confirmation. So here are some of his writings. This was in 1985. He comes in and he said, Dear souls, I have come to enlighten your awareness along the path of understanding, for there are those that have questioned within themselves as to how spirit works. <coughs> and how it is only a few are able to understand the field of energy. 
that is around each and every one of you. Each and every one of you have a field of energy. Some of you can feel it, some of you can't. He goes on to say, um, <clears throat> okay, well, I, as to how spirit works, and as only a few that is able to understand the field of energy that is around each and every one of you, so it is that I have come to try to teach you the knowledge that so many of you have questioned of mine. First, I must tell you that we do not come to judge mankind. He doesn't judge. Nor condemn. We're only here to teach those that are ready to learn. Those of you who don't understand will gain knowledge along to a degree and can accept only that which their consciousness would let them gain. So people, I have seen spirit manifest in body form. Back in 1979, I was meditating with my friend Dale. We used a trumpet at that time. A trumpet is a is an instrument is aluminum and it's like a funnel and you put it in the water you use the chemicals so from salt and soda those are the chemicals the spirit works with this particular night here when i were meditating the room was pitch black we could hear footsteps walk across the floor now gail is sitting in front of me with the trumpet and I was only 36 years old at that time. So I'm thinking, I'm hallucinating. I'm not seeing this. And of course, I had my eyes closed, but I could feel his physical presence. He put his hands on the back of my chair, and as he stood between us, he had like a reddish pass through his hair, and he was in a beige suit. After meditation, Gail said to me, did you see anything? <laughs> And I thought, if I tell her about I saw this man standing here, and I heard him walk across the floor, physically walk across the floor, I could feel his hands in the back of my chair and saw the substance. Well, when Christ rose, he manifested, he manifested in, his, in his spiritual form, in embodiment. Not the physical, but the spiritual form. And those that can see him, can see him. Not all people can see spirit. Some people can hear. Hear them, or just can't. So it's your, whatever your capabilities are, or whatever God gives you. Back in 1985, when I first married my husband, Martin Hitt, who was a minister also, spirit comes to me and tells me things. So before I met him, I was asleep, and this big eye spiritual eye. Was, there were two of them, and they were talking, and they came right down on my chest and said, cancer. So I didn't pay attention to it. I started breaking out the sweats. You always pay attention to your teacher. If you, have that, if you have that ability, you listen to what they tell you, but always test them first. So I got married to my husband. Soon, soon I was about three or four months, the voice came back and said, Diane, you have cancer, get to a hospital before it's too late. So I told my husband at the time, Martin, I heard a voice last night call me up on my name and said I have cancer. At that time, he wasn't in the spiritual work or he hadn't seen any of this. I trained him, later he became a minister, very good minister. So he said to me, that's just your imagination. I said, no, Martin, I heard the voice. So he said, well, forget about it. Your brain had cancer and it's out of your mind. What well, I went down to San Diego. About five months down there, the voice came back again and said, Diane, you have cancer. Get to a hospital before it's too late. It's undetected. So I went to Kaiser Hospital and I said, there's something wrong with me. Doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you. All your lab tests come up perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. I said, I think you better check. So they cut my throat. They went down and they found a tumor right near the heart. Wow. He said, how did you know you had this? I said, voice, a voice told me. <laughs> he said, 
okay. <laughs> and he says, Louis, are you going to die? No, he didn't tell me that. He just told me to get to the hospital. So I had to have the spleen removed and all that. And I recovered from that. So God had a purpose for me. I was stage two with Hodgkin's disease. I had 37 treatments. My hair fell out a little bit, but it grew back. And Martin was saying, let me see your bald head. <laughs> I tell him no. <laughs> so then I was in, uh, again, I had breast cancer. I was in heaven. And her voice came back again and said, Diane, you're cancer. So I went to Dr. Ashraf and I said, I got something wrong with me. And she said, no, you know, those are cysts. Don't worry about it. I said, no, you better check. So they checked out stage one. So, I don't forget that little voice. <laughs> My husband told me when he passed away, honey, <coughs> he said, when I die, I'm going to wrap on your bedstead. I said, okay, sure you are. <laughs> well, New Year's Eve, two years ago, shortly after he passed, I heard six knocks on the bed, loud knocks. So loud that the dogs started barking. Wow. So I knew that was Martin. And I heard him call me, direct voice. One night he said, Diane, help me. So I told him, go to the light. And so he doesn't come to me in the nighttime anymore, but he'll come to me, he gets me pennies. He gives me pennies. Night that he died, before he died, on the fourth he died, which incidentally, incidentally, I was married to my first husband on the fourth, but he died too. I also had my operation for Hopkins on the fourth, wow. and Martin died on the fourth. Wow. Well, I put a penny on his nightstand, and I said, here's a penny for good luck. Well, he died the next morning, but every day I find the penny. It could be on the curb, it could be behind my car, it could be in the store. One time, about four months ago, see, he contacts me. I can hear him. People say I'm crazy, but no. I hear him talk to me. I went into the, to the uh, stairs and found pain, just as I was going in the door. I said, thank you, Mark. So I picked up that pain, and I heard him say, would you like to try for two? <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I don't actually hear any things. I, I said, oh, okay. Talking to myself, going to the store. <laughs> I find another penny as I go into the doorway. He says, where would you like to try for three? No way. I walked about 50 feet, and by the orange crate, there was a penny standing up. So sweet. Those are the three pennies he gave me. So I got over to the cat department and he said, can I help you pick up the cat food? I said, sure. <laughs> well, I thought I would share that little bit with you. The rest of the time, and here he goes on to say, uh, first I'm going to tell you, oh, he doesn't come to judge. They, they don't come to judge, just teach him. One must understand that all men have not the same understanding of this vast teaching. So there are those on different levels of thinking along the path of understanding. There are energy fields around each and every embodiment. Some are aware of their energy, others are not. There is a great deal of vibrations of energy, some are negative, some are positive. He said, in order to have things in balance, you must balance the two. Never think of negative vibrations towards another person who lets you stand out if it's strong enough will manifest. So you send good to your neighbors. You wish them well. You wish them love and understanding and compassion. Sometimes, well, before Mark passed away, I live in Hemet. There's a lot of homeless people in Hemet. People that have educations that couldn't afford to pay rent. People who are standing in the rain and cold behind this thrift store. 
Mark had a lot of jackets, and I said to him, let's go home and get all your old jackets and pass them out to the homeless. They didn't have coats. They were out there in the rain, cold. So we went home, got all his jackets, and we passed them out. And they were grateful for them. Other things you can do, all of you, to help your fellow man, when you hear our calling that you are supposed to help someone, go forth and go forth and give. Give of yourself. It may not seem much to you, but to them it does. I had a lady in a restaurant one day, her name was Neighbor, and she was about 89 years old. People minded. I worked there as a CNA. And I took a doll there, a little rubber doll. I had a collection. I gave it to her, rather than the legend. She loved that doll. She would take it to bed with her. Her daughter in law bought her a beautiful porcelain doll. And she came into the restaurant and she said, Here, babe. She says, I don't want it. I have my baby already. Well, I put the house there. I took the doll with me. But at Christmas time, I went back. She was sitting there in the lobby in her wheelchair, looking down, and I gave her the baby. And she got tears in her eyes. And she started to cry. I said, no, babe, that's fine. That's your little baby. So anytime you can help somebody, just a small little task like that, or go forth and help someone if they're hungry. Last week, I was in the parking lot. <laughs> Another story. Up at the 99 cent store. There's a lot of people running around the parking lot trying to make money. Some of them want to make money for their own reasons. But this lady approached me and she said, can I wash your car? It looks. I was in a hurry and I said, oh, that's fine. I just, I just got my car washed. She said, well, I see that. I, I just, I'm just trying to make some money. I said, no, not right now. So I came out, she's still there. She's washing this other couple's car window or their lights. And she said, are you sure you don't want your headlights washed? I said, no. She said, well, you know, I'm out here because I had a job and I hurt my back. And this is the only way I could make any money. And she said, I got thrown out of my house. I lost my house. And now I live in a trailer. And I'm just trying to make some money for these chicken wings. Really? So she got to talking to me. She said, my name's Julie. And she went on and on. I said, OK. I said, you know, I heard Mark. I'm about ready to shut the door. Mark said, give her some money. <laughs> what? Oh, I had $5 in a corridor, so I said, here, here's five dollars. We'll get you chicken wings. She looked up, bless you. Can I give you a hug? I said, no. It's the flu season. She says, well, then, so you help people. And then the other day, see, facts are very important. You think it, you say it, you send it out. But what we make sure is good thoughts because you don't want any negativity coming back to you. Okay, because it does happen. I was in the store, again, at Sprouts, last week. And I'm thinking, it's every time I go to the house, I spend money. And I'm thinking, oh, I have to spend more money on these groceries? And I get up there, I don't know where my credit card, my groceries, and this young man walks up and says, wait a minute, I'm buying that. Is she, you don't have to buy that groceries. Oh, no, God loves you, and so do I, and I'm buying that. He told the lady, here's my card. I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't have that much. I just had cheese and crackers. But he bought them for me, and I thought, what a nice gesture. You know, so I just want to share that with you. Anything, anytime you can help anybody, it's a blessing. If God tells you or Spirit tells you to give somebody something, you give it to them. Don't worry about it, because it'll come back to you tenfold. Even, even if you visit someone in a rest home or give a shirt off your back, if you see somebody that doesn't have one, then you got I got the clothes. So <laughs> I give people stuff. 
I gave my girlfriend all kinds of stuff, but that's beside the point. I didn't mind. I was going to throw it away anyway. I was going to sell me snobby. She didn't have any clothes, so I gave it to her. So I let you think about that for a while. He also talks about uh, the energy. Everything, is, is, everything should be in balance, he says. Or, it's up, or if it's not, it causes disharmony within your physical body. Mm -hmm. If you say something bad about somebody, I'm pretty sure you got a headache. Because what are you doing? You're sending out negative vibrations. So what are you giving in return? Negativity. Your body suffers from it. So send out good thoughts, loving thoughts, and help those who need you. Okay. <laughs> then he goes on to say, it'll put away the negative vibrations. He says, not all individuals will understand the works of spirit. There are different levels of understanding. That's why I speak this way. For not all will think the same, nor have the same enlightenment. For each and every one of you are on the perception, along the path of awareness. I speak of awareness rather than life. Because that's, that's where, let's see, but what is the mind? Because there are things that have no awareness, and yet they are a part of life. Man has within himself denied the fact that there's a different levels of understanding of spirit. Now I speak of spirit because that's what each and every one of you is, a spirit in a body. You have a spirit within your body. Also, we all know that, right? Because <laughs> once we pass over, but that spirit goes on into another dimension. And sometimes you have lessons that you learn, or lessons that you haven't learned on this side. And once you get on the other side, you learn those lessons. Nothing is by accident. You may say, oh, why did this happen to me? But it's not by accident. Like when I had cancer, I had faith. I had faith that I wasn't going to go anywhere, regardless of what they said. And I survived. So I'll leave that with you. And I hope that I have been of service to you this evening or this afternoon. Uh -huh. Peace and joy.